Welcome to the next session. And this session is all about the benefits of SME and large industry collaboration. So you might wonder, SMEs and large industry, are they friends or are they foes? And we tend to think they really are friends. But they took some time to become friends because this has only been a phenomenon since the late 90s. Um, so larger companies may actually assume a role as business partner, as product distributor, or even as a customer. And one SME's aggressive competitor may be another SME's business alley. So we're going to learn much more about this in this session. And it is my great pleasure to welcome to the stage my panel. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it is my great pleasure to introduce to you Riza Durajazukil, the Director of Innovation and R&D Strategies at Netash. Yes. Lovely yeah. having you. Next to him, Kasper Garos, Head of Public-Private Partnerships at Philips, the Netherlands. Also lovely having you. And finally, Cherik Opmeer, Director of International at RVO, the Dutch Enterprise Agency from the Netherlands. Also <coughs> lovely having you. Ladies and gentlemen, before we get started, again, I'd like to ask you to please put in your questions via Slido. Thank you very much. Okay, um, in order to get started, I'd like to ask you in about two minutes just to give a brief introduction about yourself. So, Riza, if I may start with you. Sure. Uh, this is Riza Dujosugil, as you said. Spelling <laughs> was great, thank you. And uh, I am Innovation and R&D Strategy Director at Netash. Netash is an ICT and telecom company, and the uh, size of the company almost 220, uh, 2200, sorry. And a uh, big uh, R&D team with the 800 engineers. And uh, I am also the vice chair of the Celtic Plus, Celtic Next, new name. And I am the member of the board member of the Network 2020, which is working for the 5G and beyond. Uh, I think it's enough. Thank you very much. Kaspar. Yeah, thank you. I'm indeed Kaspar Garros. I'm working at Philips. I'm responsible for public private partnerships worldwide. And as an audience, you may know Philips is a large company, but I have to tell you that lately we have gone through a massive transformation. So forget the televisions, the lamps, and the, uh, the kitchen equipment, because we're, this is all about medtech and, and healthcare. So that's the focus of the company, uh, basically going from prevention, diagnosis, um, treatment, and, uh, and home care. And we'll come back in the panel, I guess, but we have been uh, active in public-private partnerships, also in Eureka, since the start of, of the program in 1985. So I'm looking forward to the discussion. Thank you. Well, my name is uh, Jack Ombi, Director of International at the Netherlands Enterprise Agency. Uh, and my responsibility is uh, execute policies for the different ministries on the international uh, sphere. So that's ranging from, from space, uh, space data, uh, satellite data using for, for example, farmers for, or for many other uh, things, uh, ranging from trade promotion, attracting uh, investments to the Netherlands, and working on innovation, making sure that we uh, thrive innovation via di di different programs, among others, of course, uh, Eureka and different other European programs. And on the other, other hand, also uh, helping developing countries develop with private sector development and also helping Dutch companies uh, well, to find their way also in, uh, in developing countries to do business. Okay, thank you so much. Well, it's great uh, to have here broader partners in a a wider uh, innovation ecosystem. If I may start with you, uh, Chair, uh, the government uh, perspective, uh, because I'm sure that large companies and SMEs really can benefit from the kind of policies that are being set out by the government. So my question to you is, what kind of policies are developed by your government to promote SME industry collaboration? Okay. Well, thank you. Well, it's, it's, it's a broad question, so I, I try not to be too, uh, too broad, but I think one of the, the elements in the Dutch uh, policy also on innovation and collaboration between small and medium enterprises is also focused very much on what is the need from the companies themselves. And if I look to another great uh, Dutch company, DSM, one of the, I think, the innovation director recently also stated that 99% of the knowledge they need from biotech, from solar, from uh, whatever, they don't have themselves. Mm -hmm. So they need to receive it from others in cooperation with others. And that's why we have a, a, a demand-driven uh, innovation <coughs> policy, uh, what we call now the top sector policy, where uh, recently we have uh, 
indicated 25 missions together with industry, together with knowledge institutes, together with governments, in order to make sure that we uh, well, find out what the societal challenges are and how we can adopt the innovation policy uh, on that sphere. So with that top sector policy and the, uh, the mission-driven innovation policy, we try to help cooperation between large enterprises, smaller enterprises, from both uh, financial side but also in, in, in the cooperation itself, so to make sure that there's also financial support for that cooperation, but also different, uh, many different uh, schemes where we can help okay. different companies. Thank you. So you're saying your policies are very much demand-driven. That means that your people within your organization, they also really go out there to events, really talk to the companies, to the SMEs, to, to gain their feedback and on the basis of that to form the policies. Exactly. So we try to attract them to, to our website, but also to, to have the discussions, but also to go to different events like this event and uh, among others, where you really can have also the interaction with different companies and find out what, what they need and how you can, uh, can help them. Okay, thank you. So, Cherk, you might think you have very good policies in place, but I'd like to check also with the companies if very they good. are quite happy what you have put out there. So, Kasper, if I may <laughs> ask um, some <laughs> feedback. Thank you. Well, I can assure you, <laughs> feedback is positive. Um, so, indeed, for especially Eureka, you rely on national governments. Right, so it's of course a global program, uh, especially European program, but you rely on national funding. And it can be an issue indeed when you uh, are defining projects to get support in the different countries because sometimes funding, uh, funding situation is not that clear. So that may be a message to public authorities, please give businesses some longer term perspective on the funding situation in your country. Um, but in general, uh, of course, we are based in the Netherlands, um, but also Philips is based in, in many other countries. And sometimes in projects we have also the other um, countries participating, like, like in Finland, and we have good support from, uh, from Business Finland, but in particular here, because the majority of, us, uh, of our operations is in the Netherlands for public-private partnerships, we are supported by uh, the ministry quite well. Okay. Thank you. So, actually, you're very happy, but you are saying, don't think just about the short-term uh, gains, but really the, the long-term perspective. Yes, because innovation is about the longer term, yeah. right? Yeah. It doesn't happen overnight. No, and there are a few countries, not to name a few, but yeah. that have, a, <laughs> let's say, a shorter-term view on the funding to provide, for instance, to, uh, to Eureka. Okay, thank you. Risa, what's your perspective? Because, um, well, you work for a large company, but I'm sure you interact a lot with the Turkish government as well, and perhaps also other governments. Yeah, uh, in Turkey, government is really supportive for the SMEs and also collaboration between the companies and the universities as well. Because without collaboration, they believe it is impossible to reach to success. For this, uh, they have a lot of different incentive programs. Uh, to be talked, their institute uh, gives a lot of incentives to all kinds of companies and uh, build some special programs for collaboration. Uh, SME involvement of those projects are mandatory. And also for the SMEs specifically, uh, there is another institute which is named as COSCAP. Uh, just give an incentive or support or mentorship to the SMEs only. So there are a lot of uh, different programs uh, in place in Turkey to support collaboration and the SMEs. Okay. So I know Philips has a lot of uh, factories in Turkey, mm -hmm. so maybe you should bring some research facilities or programs to Turkey as well. We can discuss so, that. Good idea. And well, business is being done on stage, ladies and gentlemen. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your uh, feedback. For the international yeah. programs, uh, Tubitag or government has a lot of uh, travel support yeah. to uh, cover the travel cost because it is really expensive to send, especially for the small companies, yeah. to other countries. Okay, thank you. Uh, a question for Kasper and, uh, and Riza. Uh, well, working together with SMEs has become a kind of part and parcel of your DNA, but mm -hmm. do you really speak the same language or is that something that you need to learn along the way. So, Kasper, can you allude to that question? Well, I would say no, we do not speak the same languages and that is also good. Okay. Because um, SMEs have a particular 
of particular char characteristics which help us in innovating better. Yeah, they're smaller, they're agile, sometimes have a specific knowledge that we lack, so I support your point on, on DSM. Also for Philips, we have been in public-private partnerships for a very, very long time, supporting open innovation, and part of that are, of course, SMEs. So as a company, we have a specific program, especially for startups, called HealthWorks, very successful. But for SMEs in particular, also when they are a, big, a little bit larger, we rely largely on Eureka, Horizon 2020, and also Excel as a joint undertaking to partner with them and also to find out whether there is a fit. And I should say, since the 80s, we do this already, so even much earlier than we had this notion of SME, large companies, and what have you. And this works quite well. Okay, yeah. very good. So. How do you go about then? Uh, do you bring a team of, uh, I don't know, uh, psychological experts together in a room to work with you, or is it just taking a lot of time to get to know each other? Not really, because, you know, in the projects, we have a lot of people with technology background, and they do speak the same language, yeah. and that helps. Uh, but I, I also can refer to your question, do we uh, speak the same language with regard to the structure of the company? And that's also not the case. Yeah. Of course, SME is much smaller, they have less layers, decision-making goes quicker, so, but we'll, we'll manage that at a project level. Okay, and time is money, so you always try to quickly find the common denominator to provide a good of course. basis. Okay, yes. Risa, what's your uh, view? Yeah, uh, sure, SMEs and uh, large companies couldn't talk with the same language, but they should come into a common point, right? Uh, because uh, to do collaboration, they should have a common goal, and they should try to reach that common goal together. So they should set the roles and responsibilities in the beginning, uh, not to discuss later, and uh, also they should think um, as a partner uh, to success. Okay. Because in the large companies, in general, large companies behave as a, uh, everything, we should get the big portion of the project uh, because we are big, right? We have strong, they need us. But in the company, we should change that mentality first, right? So it all starts with like um, changing, as you said, the mentality and redefining yourself, not right. just to put yourself or others in boxes like you're the SME, you're the university, you're the large industry, mm -hmm. no, we're all partners in the project aiming for the same goal. Because in the yeah. uh, 50 years ago or 20 years ago, uh, companies tried to do everything themselves, right? <laughs> now it is impossible. Yeah. If you try to do everything themselves, or ourselves, it is impossible to be alive, right? Yeah. So you should partner. So we should learn how to be a partner together with the SMEs, universities, and other companies, right? Yeah. So we should share the load, because now the days or life is complexer than the previous. Yeah. Yeah. So we should change. Yeah. So. Uh, mentality has changed, culture changed. So, so partnerships are really, really vital. Um, Czech, you already said, like a company like, like DSM from the Netherlands, they really depend on 99% for their knowledge from, from outside uh, DSM. Um, do you have a lot of companies that are actually approaching you like, hey, can you please help us? We don't know where to start. Can you provide us with a kind of like one-stop shop or gateway to meet up with other companies? Do you organize networking days? How do you go about um, well, y yes and no, because sometimes uh, companies come to us, smaller companies, like, okay, we have this and this idea and program, and can you help us to find other networks, both in the Netherlands, but also abroad, so if they want to work in international spheres, how can they find the right partners? Um, and bigger companies who are also looking for smaller companies or specific knowledge, and they ask, where can we, where can we find it? And I think that's also one of the interesting things in the, in the top sector policy, that we really try to bring together uh, what we call the triple helix, the, the knowledge institute, the bigger companies and the smaller companies, to make sure that they have a common, common ground, start a little bit of common language, 
uh, in which they can find each other and also have a, a better network where they can find each other. And that's what we also try to accommodate. Okay. And I think on the European uh, sphere, with, with Eureka, with Eurostars, that's also very helpful to, to bring together the different, uh, different uh, partners, different companies. And in the clusters, I think there you also, but you know much more about it than I do, how you can bring together those different uh, elements and get very nice results. Yeah. Yeah, because that, that's very important as well. I mean, um, the collaboration, of course, doesn't stop at the borders. Uh, Eureka is, of course, a very international network. And I'm sure you're also facilitating to set up those contacts with other potential companies uh, yep. across the borders. OK. Um, let us take the question that we've gotten from the audience. Um, what is the best business model to work with SMEs according to your experience? Business model, are you setting up business models for that? S looking specifically at Risa and Casper? Yeah. Uh, you should build a business model, model for collaboration, not specific to SME. But for SME, yeah. it is hard to trust that. So that business model should be based on openness and trust. So each other we should trust and we should feel as a partner, same as a partner in the company, right? Because you are trying to reach a goal. For this goal, you should behave like this, right? But uh, in the SMEs, there are a lot of risks to work together with them because economical condition in the environment, ecosystem, there are a lot of factors. You uh, put your own risk, right? So you should address that. Maybe you should give some other jobs to strengthen them. So there is no one clear formula for it. But fairness is the essential. That's okay. what I can say. And you should put the rules, roles and responsibility in the beginning. I am saying again. Otherwise, you fight all the times and do nothing. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good advice. Kasper? Yeah, I fully support this. It's also a matter of trust because you hardly know each other, certainly in these Eureka projects. But of course, you go through a process together. A project takes typically three years. And then, you know, you really know what uh, each other mean to each other. And that's, and that's good. And typically, after a project, we are all typically satisfied because the SMEs have learned a lot about uh, doing business with a larger company. They have gotten really, let's say, the window to the world for, for our network. And they have been exposed also in these kind of conferences to many more partners and players. And that really helps. So some of the companies, smaller companies, became uh, partners to us or suppliers to us or they could become a, a supplier to, for instance, in our case, in projects to a hospital that was part of the consortium. And they did that themselves. Yeah, so we have, we have abandoned uh, examples of that. OK, great. Yeah. In order to stay with the examples, we talk about industry as a me collaboration. But uh, Kasper, do you have a tangible example that you can share with us? Well, um, yes, yeah, an example I, I use more often. Um, so. It was in February of 2010, so a long time ago, nine, nine years, years ago. ago. Yeah, and there was an uh, IT IPO event, a matchmaking event that was in Berlin. And um, an associate professor from a medical university and an SME came to us, to Philips, and they said, we want to start doing innovation in the cloud. And we thought, well, OK, what is this now? Um, but at that time, that was really unknown, and it was rather revolutionary. So we took back the idea uh, back home, and we studied it, and we said yes. So what happened? This was about platform development, which is quite, I would say, usual uh, today. But if we fast forward the situation to 2019, one of the businesses of Philips is offering platforms to hospitals. And the guy who said internally, let's do this, this is, you know, this can be a risky idea, but this is the direction anyhow, let's do it. That guy is now our chief architect, and we still talk fondly about this project that helps us a lot. So it was a medical, a medical university center, SME, I can call out the SME, it was Sofion in Maastricht, the Netherlands, who really got us 
on board. Very nice example. Risa, do you have a tangible example that you can share? Yeah, NetEdge is a system integrator as well. Uh, so as a nature of our uh, job, we should work together with a lot of SMEs and other companies to do that big project, right, as a system integrator. But in R&D, we also should do the projects together with them. Yes, I have a lot of examples. For example, one of them is the disaster recovery center, control center done by the government, uh, which is now working and successfully handling the disaster, automatically send the comments kind of things. So we work with a lot of SMEs together to build that, to complete that. So we have success stories a lot, but we have uh, other uh, opposite stories as well too. Okay, very good, thank you very much. So, so far we've talked just about the collaboration between SMEs and large industry, uh, and also uh, the collaboration with government. I think we're, we're missing out on, on one very important side um, of the angle, uh, and that are the academic and research institutions. So, um, if we're throwing them into the mix, do you feel a kind of complete when, when doing your business. Can you just elaborate on how you work together mm -hmm. with uh, mm -hmm. universities? And Cosmo, perhaps you also have like a regional example from, uh, from Philips? Yeah, I already gave the example about the medical center, that was the Amsterdam Medical uh, Center. So indeed, uh, research institutes, universities are, are quite important. Uh, they have a certain knowledge that we also typically lack. They also have very good ideas. Yeah. Um, I, can, I can give a, a few, but that, that would take um, too much time. The regional um, uh, project you refer to is indeed in Brainport, in Eind the Eindhoven area in the Netherlands, where we really closely work together with many partners. There's also university, technical university, but also many smaller partners where we uh, innovate and we test out certain innovations uh, close to home. And that's also helpful because then you get earlier feedback. Yeah. But in those projects, we indeed have many smaller players and we learn a lot okay. from them. Do, do you also see this trend, uh, Cherek, where uh, you, you see more collaborations between industry, SME, and academic institutions? Because that's one of the reasons why the top sector policy has been set up, I think, in 2011. Mm -hmm. So we go back yeah. about eight years. Can you elaborate on that? No, I, th I think if you, if you look to the, to the figures, um, in a recent report, it was uh, indicated and was surveyed by a, a large part of the innovation uh, spent in the, in the Netherlands that almost half of it is spent in collaboration between bigger companies and smaller companies, so it's some one, one and a half billion. So I think there, there you automatically have that it's, it's including also the, the Knowledge Institute, and if you look indeed to the top sector policy, I have the feeling sometimes that the, the uh, the division between companies and uh, knowledge institutes or universities is becoming smaller and smaller. If you look mm -hmm. to, indeed, Eindhoven, where I recently had a visit to one of the well, spin-off small companies who are investigating or, or producing a robotic arm where you could, um, it's always, it was a little bit of a difficult, so, but inside your eye you can scrape a little bit of the, um, uh, the, what the, the, what's the English word yeah. for that? Well, yeah. Very enthusiastic people, yes. and they are they are making it. And they just came out of a research program from the university, starting a little bit of their business, and now trying to uh, to build it and and bringing that to the market. Yep. Um, so I think I think that integration and the way that is working is very interesting because it makes universities much more relevant, the science much more relevant, uh, and the, and the steps towards bigger companies is also becoming very relevant. Okay, yeah. so actually the, the impact that will go, will go up. Okay, yeah. yeah. What, what's your experience, uh, Riza? Yeah, if... It doesn't have to be just Turkey, it can be just the, the Europe or the world. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Uh, if you want to real long-term innovative projects, you need deeper investigation. You cannot handle everything in your house, as I said before, for the SMEs and other companies. It is applicable to universities as well. We have to, a relation in different level with the universities uh, in Turkish, 22 Turkish universities. We are doing common projects. Also, we are giving some lectures uh, in the universities. And 
also we are hosting the students in the, our environment, in the company. So we are working together with them to teach the technology while they are studying that. Yeah. So uh, there are a lot of ways to ha do or build a relationship with the universities, but certainly we need, that's the other part of the triangle, right? Yeah. Without the universities, how you can say there is a research in there. Exactly. So yeah. we should, we have to. Yeah. So do you build specific uh, like in-house programs uh, to get SMEs, like the right SMEs, but also the right university brains uh, on board of a project? Do you do your own kind of pitch sessions or any other formats? Kasper, do you have well, some specific? Yeah, I explained already we have a specific yeah. program for startups. Yeah. Yeah. And there we really um, cooperate, cooperate with them and also there's the possibility we take a stake in them and eventually buy them, yeah. you know, if the cooperation is successful. As I said, for SMEs, when they're a bit larger, uh, then we typically use the collaborative programs like Eureka, Horizon yeah. 2020, and what have you, yeah. to do this. So you're not trying to invent everything yourself, but just putting to work of course. what's out there. Yeah. Okay. Is yeah. that also your experience, Riza? Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, we are doing a lot of things to yeah. select the SMEs and the universities or the academicians to work together. For the SMEs, we have a program which is named as Natasha as a platform mm -hmm. to do uh, common projects with them. So we are, uh, in reality, you, you know the SMEs better if you work together with them. Otherwise, it is hard to uh, know what is their capabilities, yeah. Yeah. is it trustable or not, yeah. kind of things. So in the NetAsh as a platform, we are doing that. And also we are uh, doing a lot of other things to select the SMEs. For example, uh, we, are going, uh, we are doing some innovation days, uh, kind of things in the company and also attending a non-governmental organization because the SME is active in there. Mm -hmm. So, uh, for example, I'm the member of the Software Association of Turkey and I met a lot of companies in there and invite them to work together. And sure, we are asking for the references kind of things, but uh, that Eureka events, Horizon, and other ETA Celtic clusters are also important to, to find the trustable SMEs for us yeah. because you are, we are doing a proposal day and such kind of events and networking is important mm -hmm. for it. So uh, thank you to Eureka to yeah. give that yeah. kind of uh, platform to us yeah. and support. But, but may I pick up on that point because you said before What's really important is to have trust, to have transparency and openness, but how much time do you give yourself to find out if a SME or also vice versa, a large industry, is trustworthy? Do you, how does it work? Do you step into a program and you give it like two weeks time or how do you know when you can really trust them? And go along on the there journey together. There are different together. methods for it. Oh, they're different, okay. Uh, yeah. But uh, one of them, sure, giving, if we don't want to take risk. Yeah. In general, we are taking the risk yeah. and we are putting alternatives. Okay, to so that you as, as a, a large step. company, you're taking the risk? Yeah, we are. Okay. Uh, together with them, sure. Yeah. Because we put penalty in the beginning if they didn't succeed. So, mm -hmm. but we could not leave them alone, right? We have to support and we should let them to win together with us, right? Otherwise, they could not be survived. So it is a complex. It is like a, a parts of the watch, right? Okay. Yeah. So you should think all the other details. So it's like a success. family. You're the mom and dad and helping out the kids yes, to grow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What's well, your experience, Kasper? Well, like in a family, the kids are different. So, um, yeah, kids are different. Yes. so here is the, the same situation. So, you so be careful. We, we cannot generalize SMEs. Uh, so there has to be a level of trust, but we should be aware that the SMEs also that are typically here are innovative SMEs. And also they invest. 
because if you look to the level of funding they get from the different programs in uh, the different clusters in uh, Eureka, they do not get 100%. So, of yeah. course, they invest themselves. Of course, they have an incentive to do this together wi within a larger ecosystem. Okay. So okay. that's yeah. a clear motivation, and that also builds trust. Yeah. And I also would like to build upon your remark about the, the clusters and also plea to the, uh, to the public authorities. I already uh, asked for some longer-term uh, vision, um, but also be aware how important these clusters are for large companies and SMEs and also academia to work together. This is really, for us, has a lot of value. And I think that doesn't come across well enough, so I just wanted to, to emphasize that. Okay. So as Philips, we're active in ITEA yeah. and in Penta. Yeah. You uh, talked about Celtic, and there are, of yeah. course, more uh, successful clusters. Thank you for this Thank point. You. So, okay, SMEs need to make their own investments uh, as well. So, when you look at a certain SME, um, let's say the SME so far has only gotten like grants from governments, do you become a little bit suspicious when they haven't raised any further investments from the private sector, or is that not a problem for you? Uh, typically, they haven't. They typically, they have more sources of income. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that makes them more trustworthy to you as well. Mm, I mean, you see the market. Yes or no? But we don't look upon it this way. Okay. We look to what they can offer technology-wise. Okay. We have discussions with them. We, you start with a project definition, and then it 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 works out. Okay. But yes. it, it's, it's yeah. an interesting yeah. question because often, also from the government side, we look into the the well, the how, how healthy the company probably is also from smaller uh, enterprises, and it doesn't mean that you always do that, but often you also look what is the network, how they're working, and if you're, if you're grant funding, then that you also want to make sure that it'll fly. Sometimes you take a bigger risk, that's also why the government sometimes uh, steps in, and then you, you, you take bigger risk, but you also want to make sure that if you have a credit loan, that you also get it back. Yeah. So mm -hmm. there you take mm -hmm. another risk than a, mm -hmm. a bank would be, or, but you also want to make sure that there is yeah. a, yeah. a kind of a trust that things will, will fly. Okay, yeah. thank you very much. Uh, we'll take another question from uh, the audience. What is the most recurrent cause of failure of cooperation projects between industry and SMEs? Cause of failure? Or are you all perfect, no failures? <laughs> <laughs> it is, yeah, it's a good dream. <laughs> sure, there are a lot of uh, failure happen, but you should see because you are in a, as a large company, we face with a lot of ex we have a lot of experience, right? So we can uh, investigate the risks and we can put mitigation yeah. or against those risks, right? Mm -hmm. So if you do that, there is no big risk. But uh, sure, there are some failures because you are committed to your customer. And, uh, and if SME didn't work well or progress well, yeah. you are in trouble. Yeah. So yeah. But this is something you're trying to mitigate, as you've already said, mm -hmm. that very early on in the process, you're yes. trying to ensure that this doesn't happen. You should feel. Happen. Yes. Yeah, you yeah. should raise the exactly. flags earlier, yeah. as early as possible. Yeah. Kasper? Well, so we started by saying, you used at first, it's trust. Yeah. So, okay, you take a risk. But I would say a recurrent cause of failure, I would not know. And perhaps it's about the expectation of certain SMEs that if they would enter such a project, that the world will be just beautiful. Yep. That may be. Exactly. And that's not the case, of yeah. course. Yeah. OK. Um, I'd like to ask you to, to pick one word which is more important to you in the collaboration with SMEs. Is it technology or is it team? Risa. Uh, technology can be learned. Okay. Uh, technology can be taught, okay? Yeah, we can handle technology yeah. in a way, but uh, teamwork, trust, yeah. and common goal is mm -hmm. much more important. Mm -hmm. for Gasper, technology I fully or support team? Us. Yeah? yeah? Okay, what would you say, Cher? I would say technology. Sorry? Technology. Technology, okay. Mm -hmm. What's the reason for that? Because I think that if, if you add something as a SME to a bigger company, uh, that's not because you can be a good team, but that's because you have something to offer 
yeah. what is needed, what could add something to the innovation, to the, to the product, etc. Uh, so I would say start with technology. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Uh, can, I, can I add yes. to that? But yeah. that's also true. Yeah. But then, of course, we have to test <laughs> yeah. how we're working yeah. together, yeah. and the team yeah. aspect is important, yeah. so I yeah. think we all agree. Yeah, because without the chemistry, yeah. it's not yeah, going to so fly yeah. Uh, yeah. anyways. Uh, another nice question, perhaps also for the, the audience to be aware of. Um, of course, when you work on, on tech projects, IP steps in, intellectual property, immediately. So mm -hmm. how do you deal with that? And do you deal with that at the beginning of the process or afterwards? So I know it's a sensitive topic, but um, I think it would mm -hmm. be good to discuss. Risa. Uh, IP is important, as you said. Uh, I'm preferring to set all the IP rights distribution in the beginning. Otherwise, you are fighting a lot. Yeah. But sometimes to setting the IP rules or IP distribution in the beginning takes a lot of time. With one of the universities, I spent almost six months to come to an agreement. So it is not an easy, it is a big uh, or difficult part of it. Yeah. That's what I believe. Okay, Kasper? Indeed, start in time to have these discussions because otherwise you have, uh, can have uh, disappointments. But, but luckily, you know, your company, uh, my company, and many companies in this, uh, in this field know this. Yep. So they do start in time. Okay. If you do this really at the end of the project, you may have a problem, especially if SMEs claim to have a particular IP portfolio they want to bring in or they want to protect. And that's possible. Okay. Mm -hmm. And is it then sometimes more beneficial to already work within a certain framework? For example, Within Horizon 2020, it's already set down in the rules of the game how to deal with IP. Uh, Eureka True. might have the same. Is that yeah. helpful for you? That's very helpful because yeah. that also sets the expectations in the right way. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That's also the experience that you uh, yeah. have, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, but I, I think it is very important also from, from the SME point of view to, to think about it in advance because if you, if you collaborate, there's also, also the, the, the chance or the risk that you are the underdog, that you are the, the, the small, just started uh, company from a university, thinking, I found out something brilliant, I'm trying to work together, and very quickly you, you could be overwhelmed by the, by the fact that this large company is mm -hmm. willing to work with you, and you, that you think, well, the IP, okay, well, we'll, we'll see later. Uh, and at a certain moment you find out, wow, this could have been very good to arrange it in advance because now it's too late. So I think, and well, from the government perspective, of course, I think more open innovation and more uh, knowledge yeah. to be spread out could also be very useful to have different, different approaches yeah. and different uh, players. Yeah. So open innovation really is uh, the key. I have two final questions for you, and then we're going to wrap it up. Uh, the first one, because we are at a Eureka event, how important is Eureka for you, Risa? Uh, Eureka is important for me, because of the networking, networking. because of the finding new partners, yeah. and new area of the technologies, and improve the technological skills of the company uh, a, a step okay. up. So, uh, and uh, those kind of events uh, give a chance to me to learn yeah. new things, mm -hmm. and. Uh, open my mind okay. in reality. I You're can, very happy with the network. Yeah, I am. Okay. I am. Very good. Uh, I, I have a chance to look from the different angle, right? Yeah. So, so I am happy about what Eureka doing. That. Very, Thank you. Very good, Kasper. Um, this I already explained the importance yeah. of Eureka to, yeah. uh, to to Phillips, but there's one more. Compared to Horizon 2020, for instance, Eureka is of course bottom up. You define the topics with each other. That's one. Uh, secondly, it's industry driven. So the topics you choose, you should be sure there's a market for it. Because otherwise, why do it? Yeah. It's very, very important. Uh, and the th third one, typically the reviews of the projects are done by experts who either come from industry or are very familiar to industry. And that means that the businesses in those projects really learn also from those reviews. Okay. And that's very strong as well. 
I would say, in contrast to Horizon 2020 or even some joint undertakings like okay. Excel. Thank you for that comparison. Chair, you're the yep. incoming chair of you. I, I would say, what, what else can I say then is the single most important thing for the coming <laughs> year. <laughs> uh, so for, for this moment and for this audience, I, I would definitely say so because okay. I think, and, and also in content, of course, the, the, the broadness of Eureka is, I think, fantastic. If I look to the, the meeting yesterday we had in the, in the, in the leaders' meeting, yeah. that you're sitting there with, what is it, 44 countries uh, with all innovation agencies, and it's amazing to, to learn from each other and to see how you can bring, bring innovation further. Exactly. So I think both from the incoming uh, chairmanship, yeah. which is, of course, very interesting, but I think it's very important for us. Okay. Yeah. Good luck with that. Final question, you only need to answer with one word. What is to you the key ingredient for successful SME large industry collaboration? One word, it's easy, Rita. Trust. 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 Innovation. Innovation. Ladies and gentlemen, a big hand to our panel. <laughs>